58 with me, Jessica Brigden of Jess B, Creative Cardiology. Welcome. Happy Tuesday and happy stamping to you. <laughs> Hope you are having a great week. I'm excited because today I am going to share a fun technique with you to use all of those amazing designer series papers that you've either been hoarding or that you have purchased here in the designer series paper sale, or maybe you're planning to get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a great technique for you. It's called Bargello technique. And this technique is actually, it uses thin strips of paper to create an amazing background. Um, and you can use any patterns with it. So today we're actually going to use the In the Wild. And we are also going to use the Sweet Symmetry Designer Series papers. Hi, Wendy. Yes, phone is sorted. This is, I am filming now on a brand new, I have the iPhone 12X Pro Max. <laughs> so my contract was up um, and I maxed, I think what really happened is I maxed out the storage on my previous phone. I had the, the, um, the iPhone 10. And um, it was so full that even though I had been trying to delete videos and pictures and going through and cleaning things out, I just did not have enough storage on there even for the apps to update. So I would, you guys saw me start filming in YouTube and all of a sudden the app would just close out. And Friday for my From the Heart Friday video, I couldn't even get Facebook to load. I'd click go live and the whole thing would shut down. So, <laughs> and the problem with that is that because I didn't have storage, it wouldn't let me just film directly either. So, brand new phone. <laughs> we should be all good. I have the max storage capacity that you could possibly get on a new phone. My husband's like, we are not dealing with this problem again. <laughs> so, he actually picked it out and everything. And, um, yeah, so I'm really thankful to be able to... Uh, <laughs> start with a fresh device here so hopefully no problems um, I have put this on the do not disturb mode so hopefully I won't get any incoming phone calls that will glitch us out either <laughs> all this fun technology stuff right <laughs> hey Kathy how are ya <laughs> oh good Wendy says that she has done the Bargello technique with patchwork yeah so apparently it's a technique often used in needlepoint um, I really don't I dabbled with it a little bit, you know, maybe as a teenager, but um, I much prefer dealing with paper. Hello, David from Cortland. Thank you so much for helping me out with my new phone. <laughs> yes, so we still have the designer paper sale ongoing here. Nine different paper packs that are 15% off. So today we are going to use this crazy wild print in the wild. And then we are also going to, if you're more of a floral person, Use the beautiful colors from the Sweet Symmetry Designer Series paper pack as well. And we'll be using the Bargello technique on both cards um, so that you can see how it looks in different prints. All right, I'm going to flip this. In the meantime, please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. If you are new to my channel, then welcome, welcome. You want to make sure you subscribe and notification so that you can um, get notified each time I share a new video here. Ooh, Kathy says that it's hot, hot, hot in Minnesota. Yes, so it's not too bad heat-wise here in upstate New York, but um, it has been very hazy, and apparently my weather guru husband is telling me that we are getting, um, the haze is caused by wildfires in northern Canada so it's the smoke is drifting south um, which I'm, I think that's true because it actually does smell kind of smoky out there um, so it's really kind of odd hey Diana welcome this will be a fun new technique for you um, a great technique um, just use with these fabulous papers or even to help use up paper scraps that you've had in the past um, I do want to point out here too my July host code 77K92FES that helps associate um, any orders that you place with me as your demonstrator. So on the first card we're using the In the Wild. 
Our card base here is five and a half by eight and a half, and this is the crushed curry color. So the colors and the prints um, in the in the wild paper pack are quite bold. We've got our evening evergreen, we've got crushed curry, we've got Cajun craze, all kinds of fun colors in here. So what I've done, I have pulled out, this is a layer of the evening evergreen, and this is four by five and a quarter. So we can actually, oops, drop the stamp case right down in front. <laughs> Have my Wildcats stamp set here for us as well. So I am going to go ahead and just adhere this contrasting layer here onto our card base. Let me get everything spun around here. All right, and then at this point, you're just gonna set that aside because then all the fun starts. Oh good, Kathy said she can use some fresh new ideas for the Wildcats, yes. This is the coordinating stamp set. Lots of fun, we've got cheetahs and lions and tigers, oh my. <laughs> all right, so what I recommend is choosing three different prints that are, and then we're gonna cut these down but three different prints here because they're double-sided. We're actually gonna use each side. I have cut these to five inches long and they're three inches wide because what I'm going to do next is pull in my little trimmer here and we are going to cut these strips in half to three quarters of an inch, okay? So three quarters here. Um, if you are in centimeters, then what is that? That's like 1.9 centimeters there. Okay, so we're gonna do the three quarters of an inch. Whoops, keep that in place. Three quarters by five and a half. All right, get my scoring blade out of there. We wanna cut these in half. All right, so what I'm gonna end up with is six pieces that are three quarters, 0.75 by five and a half. Okay. And it's always fun to see, you know, depending on where the prints fall on your paper, how these things, <laughs> how these things come out. All right, so we have our six strips of paper here. All right, get that out of the way. All right, so now what I'm going to do next is a, just, this is just a piece of basic white. I've cut this to four and a quarter by five and a half. So just a quarter sheet of cardstock because this is what we're going to glue everything to um, in order to actually get started. Okay, so I actually want to, let's see here. I want to go well, let's see here. I'm gonna go like this. Okay, we gotta find a pattern for our prints to see which way you like them. So actually, I'm gonna go across my paper. Yes, we're gonna do strips like this. So this way, the patterns will go all the way across. And we're just going to, each one has a, that's why we're using six patterns. Or we chose three papers, that gives us six patterns. And then we're gonna mix and match how we lay them out here because we'll get such cool, crazy, crazy prints. Isn't this neat? Yeah. Hey, Karen, hello. Glad you could join us from Ohio. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us. All right, I love this one. All right, and then here's, all right, so on this one, I only have one little tiger face there. So I think I'm gonna glue it this and use the plant side. And then on this one, I have a tiger showing. So I'll use that one for the face. Okay. So I feel like people haven't been using this in the wild designer series paper as much. It's, it's a bit bold, it's a bit 
wild and crazy. So I have a feeling people are a little bit intimidated by it, but honestly, I love the, the patterns here. And so don't, don't let it scare you off, okay? <laughs> and that's why something like this paper sale is an amazing time to try out all these different papers that maybe you've kind of been on the fence about a little bit. Okay, and then I'll glue one last one down. I will have a little bit of overhang, but that's okay. Okay, so since we glued our papers on horizontally, we are then going to cut these in the opposite direction. So we're going to stick these into our trimmer here, and we are going to cut some pieces that are half inch. Again, get your scoring blade out of there. So we're gonna cut these at half inch, and then what I found handy is to actually line these up so you know which direct you know which order you cut them in because you're going to alternate so the first one is a half inch the next one um you could go three quarters inch let's go with let's see you can go with a three quarter inch on this one and then maybe let's see what happens if we do Let's see. You can, it's totally random. That's what's cool about this. All right, so I don't think I want to do half inch because it'll cut the tiger's ear off. I'm actually going to go with a full inch on this one because that way, that way we get the little tiger face still. We don't want to disfigure him too bad. All right, so I'm going to come in here again. I'm going to go back to a half inch and then a three quarter inch piece. And then an inch. Make sure I got that in there properly. Okay, and you might end up with some pieces left over. You might not use the, the whole thing here, but I've got it laid out in the order that we cut them in. And what we're going to do is to start with the very top, apply our adhesive to the back. There we go. Just apologize. Hey, Janelle, welcome. We are trying out the Bargello technique today. All right, so let's come in here and we'll line up because I want a nice even border. So I'm gonna put this piece towards the top right and then I'm gonna come in here and we are going to glue this next piece, but we're gonna shift it towards the left. Okay, we're going to kind of move it out of the way a little bit. And that's the, the cool thing with this um, is that the whole thing is about alternating these patterns and, and um, shifting them so they don't line up just so. The way well, you end up with this neat, um, really neat visual technique here. So I am butting them right up next to, you know, the, the one on top. But you can see how it's it's starting to the pattern is starting to take shape here as we off center each one. All right, so this one I'm going to try to line up. I'm gonna just center that one. All right, and then we've got our next piece. And then this one. I'm gonna go back over here to the right, and then we'll move it back towards the left with this next piece. Isn't this cool? Have you ever tried anything like this? It's such a fun technique to use with your with your scraps. Okay, so I've got just a little bit of border at the bottom. That's okay. I'm not going to um, to push it with these other pieces. We'll just leave it like that so it's still pretty cool hey philomena welcome glad you could make it all right let's see here let's oh how about that a little brighter light how does that go yeah okay 
All right, so like I said, you might end up with a, with a little bit of extra. That's okay, you can use those for another project. But this way we have our main focal design. And isn't that kind of cool? That way it's not one single pattern. You've actually used six different patterns on here, which is really neat. All right, so this paper in the wild coordinates with the Wildcat stamp set. And I feel like since we've got our, our tiger on here that we should go ahead and stamp him. So I'm pulling in, I've got just a scrap here of basic white. Oh good, Wendy, you can see well. You're thinking my, um, yes, the camera on my new phone. Actually, we, um, David and I, after work yesterday, we went to one of the uh, state parks um, just to kind of try try out the camera and take a few pictures. And oh my goodness, the pixel quality of this new iPhone 12 Pro is amazing. Um, and I actually think the, the camera, just the photo quality of these phones now is so amazing that that's actually one of the reasons why my uh, phone storage filled up so fast was just the picture quality is so good. That means they're a large file size. Okay, so I stamped my tiger image here um, in crushed curry, just on a scrap. You might as well use up, I'm sure you guys all, because you know we don't, crafters, we don't throw anything away. So you probably have a whole bunch of scraps like I do that have miscellaneous pieces punched or cut out of them. Oh, Janelle says her weather radio just went off and alerted her to some storms heading towards Tompkins and Cortland. Yeah, I think when I looked earlier, um, the weather was saying perhaps some rain coming in after four. So as long as it holds off till four, that'll be great. Give me time to get my video done. <laughs> done and uploaded. No more weather interruptions, please. <laughs> All right, so I'm also using, so I use the large, the cat image here. Um, I'm also going to use the stripes and the striped face here. Um, the nice thing is, is that these, the stripes and the faces are interchangeable on both cats. Um, and then of course you can put cheetahs on each one or however you wanna do it. That's a lot of fun, love that. So I'm gonna come in here with the face and that is the great thing. I love that this is photopolymer um, because I'm going to, I'm aiming for the nose. That's the easiest thing for me to see, especially at this angle. And that's okay if it's not completely straight or perfect. That's okay because um, we've got a coordinating die cut here and that will help um, eliminate some of that. So let me grab this piece here. All right, grab my die cut, get that ready, and then we'll add our stripes here. Okay, and these, where do we want stripes kind of going down the butt and across the chest? All right, so we've got lots of stripes. This is with the uh, tuxedo black memento there. And then we will die cut this. See? That makes it, when we do that, that makes it perfect. All right, so let me quick run that through, and then we will add a tag for a greeting here. Okay, so, little snap, crackle, pop. I should have had that done already, oh well. Okay, so here we go, we've got our large cat. Don't want to lose my die cut, so I'll put that up there. And then for a greeting, I have here just a one inch piece. I think this is one inch by three inch. And I'm going to use the pick a punch here. And this one, I can never remember because we have three pick a punches in the catalog now. These are on page 149. And I am using the treasured tags pick a punch. I liked the shape of this one. I thought that was quite um, regal looking since we're working with with lions and tigers and all of this fun stuff. So I'm gonna slide this in and you do wanna make sure it goes all the way in as far as it can go. And the key to using these pick-a-punches 
is to flip it over and make sure your paper is actually in there straight because if it's off to one side, your tag is gonna come out funny. So you wanna make sure that it is even in those guides, okay? And then go ahead and, and cut your tag, flip it over, pull that out, and then we have this nice, beautiful design. And if you wanted to do both ends, you'd repeat that process. I actually think I'm just going to have one end be nice and fun shaped. And then I'm actually gonna layer my, my tiger here behind it. So what I'm gonna do, we need a sentiment. We've got there for you always. Thanks, you're the beast. Um, wild birthday, you are fierce. Hello. Um, which one should we go with? What kind of a card do we need? Yeah, oh, Wendy, I persuaded you to get these cats. Hi, Kathy's like, pretty kitty. <laughs> Aren't these fun? Okay, how about we go with There For You Always. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to peel this one off of my, my sheet. Let me grab a block here. And I think I'm going to stamp this in Evening Evergreen ink. Um, to coordinate and pull in with our, oops, I got some ink on there. I'm going to wipe that on my, wipe that on my pants here before, <laughs> so that I don't transfer it to my hands. That's why I stamp with blue jeans. Okay. So I'm going to stamp this towards the right, towards the side that has that pretty little treasured tag cut out. All right those stamps back. All right, so I'm going to flip this over as well as my wild cat here. And we are going to add our dimensionals. Oh, I'm working on a partial sheet trying to use this one up. I'm only going to add a dimensional to the right side there because this other side is going to tuck underneath my cat. And I want to make sure I don't want it to be weirdly bumped up. Okay. So, take those backings off, pull in our card here. Now, let's see, how about, ooh, I don't want to, um, I don't want to hide my cat. So, I'm going to, well, I'm just going to point my treasured tag right at the cat. And then we'll go ahead and layer our, our tiger right over there. All right, what do you guys think? I love that. I think this is a cool technique, but I do think we need some jewels. So how about I pull in some of these metallic pearls They come in gold and silver. And since we have a regal looking tiger here, how about we add some gold pearls to this? Let's go ahead and we'll put one here. Yeah, we'll just kind of put a few on here. And oh, we could put a few more. Let's see. I'm going to just put a few around my cat. There we go. That's kind of fun. All right. Yeah, so I hope you like that idea for our wild cats in the wild paper pack there. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah, definitely give it a try. It looks, it's one of those techniques that kind of looks intimidating because you have all these different patterns and the lines are going in different directions. But that's why I'm showing you because it's really not, it's not as crazy as it looks. All right, so let me clear things out a little bit, make room for our sweet symmetry paper for our next project here. So I'm just gonna tuck this one over there. Okay. So love the sweet symmetry designer series paper, but you know me, I love bright colors. All right, so with this one, we are going with a card base of Just Jade. Did you guys notice that I had my tropical prints? I thought this pulled in with all the greens from both 
<laughs> both projects. All my fun, wild tropical leaves were intentional here. <laughs> okay, so our Just Jade card base and five and a half by eight and a half. Fold it and score there at four and a quarter. How about we make this one a uh, vertical or portrait since we did landscape on that one. All right, so for this, I'm pulling in a layer of Knight of Navy that is four by five and a quarter. Love the classic look of the blue and greens together. Okay, so we'll stick this right on here. And again, go ahead and set that aside because we're going to be working with our patterns next. So again, I recommend that you pull in, on this one we pulled in three different papers, so we ended up with six designs on here. Um, uh, Wendy wonders if I know Jenny. Um, boy, I don't know. I'll have to look her up, Wendy. The name doesn't sound familiar to me. Aww. So on this one, um, go ahead and use six. I wanted to use this one, but we've got pink on the back, flirty flamingo, which go coordinates perfectly with this pattern, which has the calypso coral that matches. And then I'm kind of torn. I've got, I love this one with the blue. And the, why don't we do that? We've got blue with green on that. So I had also picked a fourth pattern, but it's so pretty. Sometimes these are kind of hard to, uh, decide <laughs> which way you want to go here <laughs> Aww. okay so we will again I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half just a quarter sheet of basic white that we're going to do all of our gluing to all right that's going to hold all of our strips so we'll pull this in these are three by five and a half we're going to cut them in half again at the three quarters Three quarter mark, so get the score blade out of the way. Okay. All right, so three quarters. And then our next one here, again at three quarters. Okay. All right, oh, get all of those out of my trimmer, there we go. All right, now it's time to figure out how we want to arrange these. So the Just Jade would go really nicely with that one. And then, so maybe we've got, maybe this should go up here. And then we could pull in some of the different pink patterns that might work um, let's go with that we'll do blue and then pink and then we'll add the other pink at the bottom all right so I think this arrangement will work we've got all of our colors laid out here so they work so nicely together all right I'm gonna just gently slide those off and we'll tape each one down Okay, so again, these are three quarter of an inch by five and a half inch strips of paper. Here we go, I wanna glue it straight across. And you could work with, with smaller sizes as well. I wouldn't necessarily go larger um, because then I think your strips would be just a little bit too big. Um, but I find that the three quarters of an inch size is manageable <laughs> for me here. Okay, then we're going to glue down the blue. Okay. And then we've got the pink, which is Flirty Flamingo. So this paper pack has a lot of fun colors in it too. You've got your Just Jade and Knight of Navy, but you've got your Calypso Coral as well as your Flirty Flamingo. And this one has Bumblebee in it as well. That's the yellow in this one. 
Oh, Wendy says she has an on-stage at-home box full of strips. Absolutely. So that's why I said this project is perfect. If you've got what I like to do, I keep all of my scraps in my paper pack. So no matter the size, I just tuck them in size and inside. And then every now and then I've got to pull out a strip and just go through what I have. And it turns out I had a whole bunch of three inch wide strips. So I cut them down to five and a half inches and then I just had to cut them in half. So really go ahead, work with whatever um, scraps that you've got. This is a great technique for that. Okay, so again, we are going to slide this into our trimmer here and we are going to cut off our different patterns. So you might wanna go at, well, let's do a piece that's three quarters of an inch. And again, make sure you kind of set them off to the side so you know which order that you put them in. So three quarters, let's do a half. And then you could go with an inch if you want. Definitely can vary the widths of these. And then oh, let's go with a half on this one. It's all supposed to be pretty random. So whatever works for you. Okay, and then actually I'm going to I'm gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna leave this and come back to it if I need to. Um, but because I want to do my card vertical on this one, I actually think I'm going to start with my center piece. I'm going to just glue this right in the middle. So I did have a little bit of hang off there. That's okay. Just make sure you use enough glue to keep it all. Oops, my dispenser. There we go. Okay. I was just about, just about out. So it's running a little tighter. Okay, so this one I'm doing right in the center here, or thereabouts. Does that look like it's centered? <laughs> let's see, help if I'd show you the whole view there. All right, and then let's, that was, I kind of took it out of the middle, so we're going to work out from the center. Okay, so we'll go with our half inch strips next and then maybe you want to do a little bit higher and then on this one I'm gonna go a little bit a little bit lower okay so that's working out pretty good let's follow that same kind of go the same thing to the left except I think I'm gonna go lower on this one and then higher on the edge there we go let's do that a little bit higher over here okay so it's all totally random and it gives you that neat <laughs> zigzag look across there but aren't those patterns beautiful and then again I did end up with some extra so you could use that on another actually that would make a cute little tag wouldn't it Ooh, let me grab my tag punch while I'm thinking of it um, let's see here how about this one let me grab my punch I always have to look. Okay, this is the Delightful Tag Topper Punch. I think that'll work. Let me just, and it looks like, yep, exactly two inches. Here, this is your bonus project for today. Squish it. Because I had to go both through the designer paper there and the cardstock layer. All right, so we'll finish that up in a minute. <laughs> All right, so for this one, since we've got Sweet Symmetry as the coordinating stamp set for this, I'm pulling in the Label Me Lovely Punch, um, and I'll punch that with some basic white here. Let me see what I've got for scraps. 
Yep. I like to use up my scraps when I can with punches and die cutting and things. So I thought this would be a fun one that kind of goes right in the center. It's a nice size. Again, that's the Label Me Lovely Punch. And I'm going to use Night of Navy ink for this one. And what do you do? How about you are perfectly unique? That is the perfect sentiment for a very unique card here with our Bargelo technique. All right, let me clean this. There we go. Get that somewhat centered. There we go. That looks great. We'll add a couple dimensionals to the back. Oh, let's, let's go overboard. Let's add four. <laughs> Just because. All right. So we've got this. And again, we'll kind of center it. That's why I went with that larger strip there in the middle. All right, let's center that on here. Okay. Make sure I don't want to cover anything up. And this particular paper, Sweet Symmetry, has some gorgeous ribbons to it. So how about we pull in some of this Just Jade braided ribbon with the gold in it. I'll grab my little bow maker from Carmen here. So I go around, tuck between, over the top, and then, hey Naomi from California. Oh, I'm so glad that you found me live. Welcome. Yes, love the sweet symmetry here. I'll tuck this in. That is our, we did the in the wild suite first. So if you missed the beginning, I'll have to go back and watch the replay on that one too. And that way you can see the um, Bargello technique, how it's done in both landscape and portrait here and how it looks in different patterns. Let me cut that off. I love these ribbons. There's also a um, flirty flamingo ribbon that coordinates with gold, gold throughout it as well, which is really cool. All right, let me grab a glue dot here. And I think this will be the nice, a great finishing touch. Stick it to the dot there. Here we go. Put it right up here on our card. Oh, great, you have both of these sets. That's awesome. Yeah, so we used In the Wild as well as Sweet Symmetry here um, for our Bargello cards. And we had just the perfect layout of um, leftover, a two inch strip leftover from our Sweet Symmetry. So I used the delightful tag topper punch on this one. And I think we need just a little bit of a little bit of ribbon for that as well. Let's see what I've actually, you know what, bumblebee would go well. And I happen to have my bumblebee gingham right here. So how about we cut, what is that, like five, five, six inches? And then we'll poke this through the back. So I gathered the ends poke it from back to front and that way I can bring my loop over the top, tuck the ends in there, pull it nice and tight. Oh yeah, so I could have gone a little bit shorter, but it depends on, you need to give yourself enough room to actually, you know, work with there. So the nice thing, if you go too long, you can always trim it down. If you start too short, there's not much you can do. <laughs> All right, isn't that cute? Should we add just a little, um, oh, do we need a little sentiment or something on that one as well? Let's see if we do our tag punch. Is that gonna be our lovely label punch? That might be a little bit too big. Let's see. All right, coming in with another scrap. That would be cute, right? We could do that right across. It'll kind of, oops, pop.
punch rolled itself off the table. Um, how about we just go with a cute little hey friend on this one. Let's do that in navy as well. Okay, let's make sure. Try to get this straight. All right. And with this, okay, so since it hangs off the edge, it just, well, actually it fits pretty well. Let's say make sure you center your dimensionals here so that you can not have your adhesive falling off your tag. Okay, so there we go. That's our, actually let's, do we want it straight? And let's go right about here. Yeah, that looks cute. And here we go. I have some in color jewels. Let's add a couple of those on here too. How about we go with, should we go with the, um, I think this is actually pale papaya, but I think it coordinates pretty well with our bumblebee, especially because they're iridescent and then it kind of um, picks up the color that's around it. So I think that works. Quick and simple little tag off of our Bargello cards there. So that's a fun idea to use with your any leftover pieces that you might end up having. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining me today on YouTube Tuesday. I hope you've enjoyed this Bargello technique and we'll give it a try yourselves. Hi, Mandy from the UK, welcome. Thank you guys so much, hi, Kathy. <laughs> All right, so glad to see that so many of you were able to join me today. And I'm gonna put out there too, I'm actually thinking of offering um, paper share since we have these amazing patterns that are on sale this month drop me a comment if you'd be interested in getting a sampler of these papers I think especially with patterns like this in the wild that are perhaps a little intimidating that I feel like people would like to try it without having to commit necessarily to a whole paper pack so if that describes you if that sounds good that you might like to try it try a sample of it, then um, drop me a line. I'm going to put details of that together tonight. All right. And again, if you missed anything, make sure you go back to the beginning and watch the replay. And like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I love it. Thank you guys so, so much. Thanks for stamping with me this afternoon. All right. Stay cool. Enjoy your summer. <laughs> and we will stamp with you later. All righty. Take care, everybody.